Hello everyone, as you may have noticed, we are at a beautiful farm. Peter, what are we doing here? Why is GWL here? Well, we are at the border of the Prague and uh, we discovered a call for the installation of the photovoltaic system for this beautiful place. So GWL decided to help with the maximum focus for the reasonable price and maximum effectiveness because that is exactly how GWL can help. This project is called Project Pasture. What is this project about, Peter? The Project Pasture is a community garden and also shelter for the animals. So actually I have uh, personal relationships to similar projects. So that's why it caught my attention. So I believe uh, the owner and the author of the project will tell, tell us more about it. We are sitting here with the owner of the pasture. Marco, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Marco and I'm the chairman of our little NGO, which runs, among others, this community farm and community garden. Next to it, we also have a sanctuary for animals. Uh, we also run a kindergarten and we take care of our orchard or edible forest. And what the project pasture offers to people which are interested in uh, farming? Uh, yes, so once you become a member, uh, you are more than welcome to uh, use one or two or three of our uh, vegetable beds so you can grow your own food. Uh, next to it, uh, as a supporter, you can adopt one of our animals uh, so that we can take care of it and nurture it. Uh, and it comes with uh, like small benefits. So if you adopt a chicken, you will uh, monthly, on a monthly basis, you would get eggs. If you adopt a sheep, for example, you would get some cheese and so on and so forth. Uh, we also, as I said, run a small kindergarten, uh, which is actually quite popular. And uh, we also have created, I would say, a quite nice piece of landscape because the place uh, we are sitting now, just two years ago, used to be just a barren field. Mm. And Marco, how long have you been running this project? Uh, actually, we are here for the fourth for the fourth year, and when we started, we had no idea what we are going into. To be <laughs> honest, you are speaking about some obstacle you had to face while building this project. So what was that obstacle? Yes, yes. Uh, well, there, there were many of them. <laughs> so next to finance, of course, uh, was our access to energies. Uh, because the place we are, it's an archeological site and it is almost impossible to attach like to the general grid when it comes to electricity, water, any other sort of energy. So uh, we had two options. Uh, not using them <laughs> or to produce them here at the at the spot. Okay, so what was your first power supply solution? Yeah, we took actually the cheapest and most probably the mm, less reliable option. Uh, so we bought a petrol uh, uh, power station or petrol power generator. Actually, not only one. For the three years, uh, we destroyed three of them. So it was a actually not that cheap in the end solution and extremely unreliable and also uh, loud, environmental, unfriendly, <laughs> so to say. Yeah. yeah, I can imagine how annoying it could be. Uh, what power supply solution do you have now? Yeah, now we have a fancy and great off-grid photovoltaic power station. Hooray! <laughs> and for what exactly do you need all the power? Yeah, if you look around, first point we need to have access to clean water for our animals. So uh, we have a well and uh, yeah, you need to water the animals. That's one thing. We also grow uh, a lot of vegetables and fruits. So we need to water the plants. Uh, I don't know, people need to wash their hands, you know, so you can run your tools. Uh, you can have some light when it becomes dark. 
So how did you manage to finance the whole photovoltaic system? Yeah, uh, like for a year we were trying to find a reasonable, reliable and let's say not that pricey solution. We didn't succeed. We asked many companies, etc., etc. Then Peter came around and came with a great solution we instantly grabbed onto. And uh, we also uh, we got some money from a private foundation and the rest we could easily afford from our own sources. So Peter, can you tell us more how GWL helped to finance? Yeah, uh, we came with a, a cost-effective solution, uh, including the batteries, which is the most expensive thing in the entire system when you install the photo photovoltaic uh, anywhere. So, uh, on behalf of GWL, we had a chance to have used all their batteries, lithium batteries, which were going uh, around the Prague in the electric bus, and it transports already two million people. So, we say, hey, we could use it for another project, and that is the point. The batteries have still 90% of their original capacity. They are not good enough for the elect for the traction system, but you can definitely use for the off-grid application where you need to store the energy, and this is exactly the place where you can use them. Okay, so it's uh, also a good solution not to throw away the used batteries and give them a second purpose, right? Definitely, that is that is correct, uh, because lithium batteries they don't have just a first life, but they have also the second life because the first application, as I said, could be the traction, but then it can be it can be uh, for the upgrade application, let's say, and because the pasture here offered uh, the the sanctuary. Of not only for the animals, but also, in this case, for the for the batteries. And Peter, how big is the system you have installed here? We used here uh, the Thundersky Winston battery cells, original, with original capacity 300 ampere hours. But as I said, uh, after six years, uh, they have like 90% of the capacity, which is uh, 270 ampere hours. So in total, it's like uh, 13 kilowatt hours system on the battery side. Then we also installed uh, nine pieces of 280 watt peak solar panels, polycrystalline. So on the roof there is a two and a half kilowatt peak. So for the available budget we did the best of possible. And so Marco, is it enough for your needs? Yeah, we are more than good when it comes to, uh, let's say, spring, summer and autumn. In winter it's slightly worse. Uh, we, from time to time, we still need to start our petrol generator. Uh, the panels we have now as they are, are not installed like in an ideal angle when it comes uh, to track of the of the sun. So the plan is we will uh, buy some uh, new panels like hopefully this year and install them on a, a new container which we will use uh, as a workshop most probably. And this time uh, we will do our best to put them like in a correct angle. So we will get the most out of them. And what were your first feelings after you installed this new photovoltaic system? My feelings, yeah, that was joy, serenity. Uh, there was silence all around, yeah. Uh, no smell and it was reliable i actually had to do nothing nothing with the uh, with the power plant with the power station unlike uh, those petrol beasts because i basically had to become a handyman a mechanic there was almost each day there was something that you needed to uh, repair replace etc etc now uh, the system needs basically no care at all so you have been running on a photovoltaic system for almost one year now. Yeah. This is your experience, what are your findings throughout this year? Yeah, actually it's it's great, you know, because it's, uh, yeah, as I said, it's silent, it's reliable. Uh, actually, you don't need to do anything with it, it just runs on its own. Uh, it's safe, unlike the petrol generator. Uh, and like on a long scale, it's actually super cheap. If you compare it with, 
I don't know, like buying fuel or, uh, or stuff like that. Also, what I enjoy the most, or one of my favorite things about the system, there is a, like a web application. So from any place I can check uh, on my phone uh, what the battery level is, uh, uh, how much uh, electricity we produce, how much we consume, etc., etc. That's simply great. All right, Marco, thank you. I really wish all the best for this project and hopefully the photovoltaic system is going to last decades and it's going to work in the future properly and uh, just all the best. Yeah, thanks a lot, thanks a lot and thanks for coming. So hope to see you soon again. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so we are in a shed where the core of the photovoltaic system is installed and Peter is going to describe the whole system for us. So I would like to start from the top. Uh, where are the cables coming from the solar array? There are three parallel strings, including three solar panels connected in series. They are going to the switching board and there is a circuit breaker, which is uh, controlled by the BMS. Uh, then the cables are going, of course, to the solar regulator. We use the Victron Energy products because they are very useful, very user friendly and works very well as well. So then we use the lithium ferrophosphate batteries, Thunder Sky Winston, original capacity is 300 ampere hours. These have 270 ampere hours. On the top, we ensure the balance of every single cell by very simple and cheap board CBM1. Then the energy is going through the Victron Energy SOC monitor BMV700. And then we have the main part of the system, which is the inverter as well, Victron Energy, 3 kilowatts, uh, converting the energy from the DC to the AC. For the communication over the internet, we use the Venus GX. We have here as well uh, the display, which is showing the SOC and the other, other values. Emergency stop. Very important in case of any emergency, we can just press it and turn off the whole system. Then to be able to connect over the internet, we use the Microtech router board. One is here and the other one is on the roof where the LTE SIM card. In case of needs, there is a still connected petrol generator, which can charge the batteries in bad weather, for example, if there is not enough energy in the batteries. Marco can also use both petrol generator and the batteries in case he would like to use a heavy load electric device or tool or whatever. The batteries are controlled by the BMS. The BMS is called LRX uh, CPM, which is produced by GWL. It monitors every single cell on a voltage level. You can set the minimum voltage and the maximum voltage. And in case that any cell is going over this value, the CPM will turn off the whole system or just the batteries or just the solar panels. On the top of the CPM, we have also the LRX BCC module, which ensures the communication. So we can, over the internet, control the CPM. We can set the values of the voltage. We can see the last events, like a problem, like a problems uh, with, the, with the battery. Uh, we can reset the system as well. 